Okay, let's come into cleaning up the photo a little bit. Um, get rid of some of the imperfection lines like this. So again, smudge tool. I pretty much use that for everything. Increase the size to a size that's good for you. Reduce the um, the opacity. Get it nice and low. I think I got that word right this time. How much of it it occupies? And then we just want to gently move that. We don't have to worry about destroying textures because that's on our skin layers. All we want to do is just gently clean up these lines. Just move them. Give them a bit of a push. With the smudge tool, it's going to mix some of those colours together. So we want to use that to our advantage and make sure that we're um, keeping that shadow nice and clean. Like where the jawline comes up, you want to push it up because you don't want to lose that jawline. And drag it down towards the uh, shirt collar there. There we go. There we go. Just drop that down as we come into the edge. And just give it a nice little bit of a just subtle movement. So it's very subtle. There's nothing that's going to be um, jumping out and making a mess. We want to do it um, very, very subtle and just be gentle with the photo as we manipulate what we want to keep and what we don't want to keep. So we'll move some of this out of the way. That dirt. Lose some of that shadow. We've got that uh, beautiful skin layer over top, so we're not going to lose any of that texture that we've created. There we go. Move that shadow down a bit. And maybe just push that out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I notice this um, picture has ghosting on it, so we'll have to just gently push to move some of that ghosting. Now we're going to bring that up. And we're going to make so, that, so the opacity is up and now we're going to just bring that shirt line together there we go bring it in down don't want to destroy it we just want to make it meet a little bit okay and just tick off a few little marks here there we go I just want to push that out a little bit and pull that down and pull that down okay so we're using our uh, smudge brush a bit like a, um, a warping tool just to get that neckline back but we're bringing the colors down and it, um, it works really well for that now we can come through, we can use um, the makeup tool on this one if we want to, or is it, um, da, 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 da. what's that, yep, that's our makeup tool, so we can come down, we can enlarge that, so spot remover, I'm going to do that one with a smudge brush, because we can do the same, a very similar sort of thing, but instead of cloning the edges, we're going to move it to auto autosave, I'm just going to smudge that. Okay. This computer is not as um, powerful as the uh, other one that I was using, the um, HTPC. Um, but it seems to have less issues with the RAM. So it seems to be a RAM capacity, maybe RAM type. So PaintShop uh, Pro 2020 is working much better in this. Okay, got some marks running down on his uh, jacket, so let's create a layer, and leave as much there as we can, and we're going to paint that black, um, where are we? I was playing with the airbrush earlier, trying to work out uh, hair tones, um, it used to be an oil brush that you could use. It didn't create a separate layer under the old Jassic. And uh, when you actually move the oil brush, it actually created this exact image that you see here. It create the hair. So you could just paint it into the oil brush. Uh, but it doesn't work the same anymore, which is a um, very sad thing. I'm trying to work out how to do hair. I uh, haven't found a, a good method yet. So other than compositing, which you don't want to be doing all the time, so. 
Right, still got that glitch in 2022 with the um, disappearing. I th I spoke too soon. I thought that was the RAM on the other issue, but um, on the other machine, but apparently not. Okay. So I'm going to just roughly paint it in and clean it up in a minute. Just give it a bit of a... There we go. It's so ironic. It's uh, dark. It's like, well, we can just paint it and leave it like this, but yeah, we won't do that. Because I actually like some of that imperfection and staining of the um, original. I think it uh, adds a bit of character to it. So you don't want to, you don't want to make it look like a um, a painting. And unfortunately, with some of the old photos, that's exactly what's going to happen. And you're not going to be able to really get around it unless you're, um, you're using Coral Draw and um, are really good at hand painting or digital painting. Okay, let's have a look. Bring it down and just make it see through a bit. Bring it all the way back. We just want to. We want it to be that little bit darker. We don't want to destroy the image. Okay, that's better. Okay. There we go. It's starting to have that RAM issue that I have on the other system. These systems uh, aren't small systems. Uh, I'm running AMD. This one's a 3600. The other one's an AMD 3700. Uh, this one has 32 gig of RAM, 3600. And the other one is uh, 64 gig of RAM. Um, Paint Shop Pro doesn't seem to utilize that RAM, which is insane. Uh, when I was playing around with Adobe, Adobe has better RAM management. It, doesn't get these lags and stutters that um, the Paint Shop Pro does, and uh, that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, it's a 64 bit um, Paint Shop Pro, it should be taking advantage, and it only gets up to about 5 gig of RAM, uh, which is really sad because of the you know, the 64 gig and 32 gig, you know, there's 30 gig sitting there not, not used, and the machine's only using for Windows, so using about 2 gig, so it's something. Um, that really needs to be addressed by Paint Shop Pro. Okay. I do like that mark. I think that's quite nice sitting there. So I'm going to use the smudge tool and leave a little bit of that. I don't like removing all the damage. I think that damage says that, hey, I'm not a painting, I'm a picture. And um, things aren't perfect. So I'm just going to. Pull that down a bit. We'll bring it in a tiny little bit. I'm just going to remove some of that um, mess. Just push it around and clean it up. But it adds those lighting tones, you know. It's possible that um, maybe his jacket was uh, creased a bit in this area. And uh, with the old cameras maybe that's what's been picked up here so i, I want to leave it i don't want to get rid of it i don't want it just to be a black piece of clothing i want it to be stark and stand out and really pop but i don't want to destroy it i want to keep some of that look there we go that's better okay so that's the before, and well, that's the after. It's probably going to look different on everyone's machine, um, depending on their monitors that they're viewing. Okay, there's no real hair detail in there, so we can just smudge that out and just go to a smaller brush size. Let me just move that. Just clean it in. There we go. I'm just going to go through and spot remove a couple of little uh, imperfections. There we go, and that's that. I'm just push things around. I'm going to leave that. I like that little bit of um, dirty double image that's happened there. It's created a bit of a hairline that pushes into his own. There we go. So it's looking better. And um, I'm just going to work out the hair now. 
Um, might make the ear a little bit darker and we'll use that um, the deeper tone shadow layer. Uh, we can try that now actually, let's have a look. Uh, go back to paintbrush. We are painting white for that. So it sees through. A bit of a, that's the subtle one. And then we have the, this one was removing the shadow, if I remember. Yeah, we won't use that one. Some of the uh, changes are very subtle, and depending on your monitor, you might not see it when I'm actually running through it. So hopefully you are. But if you're not, that's okay. There we go. Might create another layer and darken that ear up a little bit. So we'll uh, just do a general color layer on this one. Um, we'll call it ear. Oh. There we go. Now we've just got to find a tone that will darken it up. And this is the problem with the colored layer. When you do it, depending on what you choose, it goes orange. What about pink? It's browns, but you know, it's like, meh. Now that's the problem with the color layer. Um, Adobe, it stays the color. It doesn't affect in that weird way, which I find very unusual. Um, might go burn. You know, that does a great job of um, really deepening the colors up. And we'll just go with light color. And we'll just paint that in. Okay, and then of course, we're just darkening up the inner ear, so we're going to drop that all the way down, we'll start from one, we'll start from off, and we'll just turn it up until it goes on a little bit. Burn's going to uh, bring out some of those details again, as we were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we'll, of course, just use the smudge brush, smudgy smudgy, to um, bring that tone in a little bit. There we go. Create that shadow running down there a bit. Push it back. Just line it in. And push that down. It's got some lighter tones on the outside of the ear. I left it deliberately light on the outside because we're just going to push away like that. There we go. And push that up. Leave that dark bit on the inside and just lighten it on the outside. And just push that color around. And that burn layer. Bring that down. Bring that up. Very subtle changes. Yeah, it gives a deeper look to his ear. Much better. You can turn it down or up depending on what it looks like on a different monitor. I like to transfer it through to the phone and then have a look on the phone and see what the um, the color looks like as well. 